subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. This year technology, iPhone 6 versus iPhone 10s speed test. Let's begin with a boot up test in three, two, one, and see which one can get there first. Now we are talking about a four year difference here between the 2014 iPhone 6 and a 2018 iPhone 10s. But you can see Apple managed to create a phone that almost has the same size body with a much larger screen and a 5.8 inch. So if you're on an iPhone 6 and you come to this, you'll probably be pretty impressed by how much screen is crammed into the smaller body. And the iPhone 10s with a significant win on the boot up test. So this is the first time it seems to be beating an older iPhone, but the iPhone 6 is not that fast. So you, so you can see the iPhone 6 way behind the 10s on the boot up test. Okay, so let's test touch ID versus face ID on the iPhone 10s. So over here for the iPhone 6, you can go in like so. And first gen touch ID here on iOS 12 doesn't feel that slow at all. But let's check out face ID, which is also quite fast here on the 10s, three, two, one and you gotta swipe up, three, two, one, and you swipe up. So they're actually quite comparable, first gen touch ID to face ID in the time. It just takes an extra second on the iPhone XS to swipe up, and sometimes it misses, so like so. So that's not really a big difference in terms of the speed to get in these phones. Second gen touch ID is definitely faster than the first gen here on the iPhone 6 though. Taking a look at their cameras on the lock screen, you can see it looks like the iPhone 6 opened that first, shockingly. And again, I've been having this issue on the 10s since I've been doing these tests. It just seems like it's a little slower from that camera lock screen. And Apple did say that the older iPhones are up to 70% faster on the camera. So I think they really went to work on the camera for the old ones because for some reason, there's just a little bit of a pause there for the 10s, as you see basically every time there on the camera lock screen at this moment on iOS 12 from the start. Okay guys, so we've arrived at the application portion of this speed test. The iPhone 6 on the left has iOS 12, one gig of RAM, Apple A8 CPU, and quad core graphics. Over here on the right, we have an Apple A12 Bionic chipset, four gigabytes of RAM, and this does have a four core GPU. It's also running iOS 12. You can see everything closed out, everything closed out. Let's begin with calendar. You can see that is the iPhone 10s. Let's go into calculator. You can see that is the 10s again. Let's go into clock. You can see that's the 10s. Let's go into Twitter. And here we're getting into some third party apps and you can see the 10s significantly ahead there over the iPhone 6. And it actually scrolls a lot smoother as well as you can see from that example. Let's go into Snapchat. And you can see Snapchat is a win to the iPhone XS. Let's go into Instagram. And you can see Instagram is also a win for the iPhone XS. Heading over into the profile page, let's go into one of my posts. Once in, the iPhone 6 performs respectably, but the XS is still ahead. Let's go into WhatsApp. And you can see WhatsApp is a win for the iPhone XS on the right. Let's go into YouTube. And YouTube seems to be ahead again for the Apple iPhone XS. Let's go into trending. Trending tab shows a similar performance, but I seen a little bit faster again for the iPhone XS. Let's go into Prime Video, see which one can win this one. And it looks like the XS might be ahead again. And yes, it is. So finally, we're seeing a phone that it's much faster than, and that is the iPhone 6. So if you have an iPhone 6, I think it's time for you to upgrade if you want speed improvements. Let's go into Amazon, but you don't actually have to go to a 10s to get speed improvements. You could actually buy an iPhone 8. You can buy an iPhone 7, and you'll still get big speed improvements over the iPhone 6. Let's go into eBay. But in terms of this comparison, this would be a nice design and speed improvement as you get more screen in a similar size body. So eBay is first on the XS. Let's go into Slither. Here's where the iPhone XS should pull way ahead. And it does here on the first game, as you've seen a marginal difference, but still pretty big there over the iPhone 6S on the XS. So very fast right there. Let's go into Jetpack Joyride. And you can see it should pull ahead here as well. And this is way ahead of the iPhone 6S or the iPhone 6. I got them confused. You see right here, look at the difference right there in load time. That is tremendous. That is a tremendous improvement. So much, much, much slower on gaming for the iPhone 6. Let's go into Dead Trigger 2 and see which one can get there first. Now, it looks like the 10S was there 
and will be in the game before you even get to the load screen on the iPhone 6. So huge update here in more graphically intensive games. So don't be confused by the fact this has quad-core graphics as a four-core GPU. This GPU is 10 times the efficiency of this one. Let's go into PUBG Mobile 3, 2, 1. And you can see PUBG does seem to be already ahead for the iPhone 10s, And I will skip to the end to see which one actually gets to the match screen first. All right, so the iPhone XS was so far ahead of the 6S that I could have closed PUBG Mobile, reopened it, and it probably still would have beat the 6 back to the same page. Let's go into start. So when it comes to these graphics, if you have an iPhone 6, the XS is going to be a massive leap in performance for you, like a huge one. So you will definitely be able to justify the upgrade if you're coming from an iPhone 6. This is huge. So you can see, boom already in the match ready to go and we're just now getting in on the six let's go into antutu benchmark three two one and you can see that antutu even with the notification should be first here for the 10s and it is geekbench hasn't been optimized i don't feel because it keeps not opening first on the 10s so yeah you can see the six wins that one but that's probably due to optimization let's go into speed test you can see speed test opens first for the 10s and let's go into iMovie, and you can see iMovie is first on the right, then on the left. So it's just a pause every time for, there goes the iPhone XS on the camera for the iPhone 6. Let's go into Video Shop. You can see Video Shop again to the XS. So this is an absolute crushing win for the iPhone XS on this first round of apps. Okay, so let's test the multitasking. We're just going to go through these applications to see how many reloads we do get. So, so far... The iPhone 6 reloads iMovie. Let's go into speed test. That's ready to go. What about Geekbench? It had that. What about Antutu? So we get a reload here on Antutu. One gig of RAM. Don't expect. And there's a reload on PUBG. Don't expect this to hold basically anything significant in the background. There is Dead Trigger 2. And we're getting a little bit of a delay there. You've seen that little chop. And that thing flew out kind of weird. Let's go into the Jetpack Joyride. And you can see that's another reload for the 6. So... The 6 is a single core phone. I mean, I wouldn't even really mess around with, you know, doing multitasking and stuff like that. This thing just not going to do it. So you can see Amazon, another reload, Prime Video. And this is why I don't understand why people buy a cheaper, older iPhone 6 when they could get, you know, other phones on the market that have four or six gigs of RAM for the same price just because it's an Apple phone. I mean, this phone doesn't have great performance here when it comes to multitasking. But on the single core and on the scrolling speeds and stuff like that, opening the camera, the keyboard, definitely an improvement for the iPhone 6, but still it's lagging behind for 2018. Let's go into video shop, camera. Let's go into the iMovie. Let's go into speed test, Geekbench, and Tutu, slight pause there. Had the match open here. Dead Trigger 2, let's go into Jetpack Joyride. Had that ready, Slither ready. And this has eBay ready, Amazon ready, Prime Video ready, YouTube ready. So here's another massive improvement. You can see almost no reloads. I think the camera was slight maybe on this one, but you can see clock, camera, and calendar. So basically perfect multitasking here for the iPhone XS. Another huge upgrade from your iPhone 6. Okay, guys, so here we are with internet speed test between both devices. Let's go to Apple.com, three, two, one. And see which one is faster. So you can see a significant improvement here for the iPhone XS to load Apple.com. Let's go into the XS. You can see, again, way ahead there over the iPhone 6. Now, you might say, well, one second. What are you talking about way ahead? But when you start adding up multiple web pages and surfing, this does make a considerable difference. Let's go into Yahoo. And you can see Yahoo is first on the right. Then is the left. Let's click this latest article right here. Three, two, one. And you could see just slightly faster on that one for the iPhone XS. Now, scrolling is even improved. So you've seen there was a little bit of a delay there from the, you know, iPhone 6. I mean, pinch to zooming. I, mean, I said scrolling. But scrolling is also improved as well. As you see, it's smoother, a little more choppy. So overall, the, you know, the internet time and speed of opening stuff and just the overall experience is a lot smoother for the iPhone 10s so coming from a six here is another big update for you 
if you care about your internet performance. Okay, so we've arrived at the video rendering portion. The iPhone 6 just crashed before I started editing this video or recording this video. Let's go ahead and hit next before it crashes. Three, two, one, and see what happens here on the compile of the video. So you can see that the iPhone XS is just smoking the iPhone 6 here on that render. So you can see, there you go. That's a 1080p 60 clip. It's the same exact video length and everything. So you can see the iPhone 6, we're just waiting and we're just waiting and just waiting. So if you're the type of person who likes to shoot some video, edit your video on the phone, you're gonna see massive, huge updates for your iPhone XS. Let's go into the iMovie and now try it over here to see if it has more to do with the application or if on an Apple app, it can actually render more closely. So let's hit save video and we're gonna go into 1080p. So HD 1080p, three, two, one. And you can see, just look at the bars. The iPhone XS is ahead. I do see a little bit better performance here in iMovie for the iPhone 6. So you might wanna resort to this if you are gonna be doing editing on an older iPhone, but huge updates here to the iPhone XS over your iPhone 6. So again, it doesn't look like the 6 can beat the iPhone XS in this area either. So the iPhone 6 is a total loss on video editing. All right, guys, so here we are, and you can see that the iPhone 6 is significantly behind the iPhone XS, and I mean massively behind in Geekbench score. So this shows that the CPU and the multi-core is just way ahead, and you've seen it in the real world and in synthetic benchmark right here. So I do believe that coming from a 6 to an iPhone XS is one of the biggest upgrades you can do in the entire iPhone lineup. So that's it. That's the iPhone 6 versus the iPhone XS. What is the final conclusion? Based on real world testing, video rendering, gaming, and synthetic benchmarks, the iPhone XS is clearly a substantial improvement over the iPhone 6. And if you held out this long, I think the iPhone 6 has run its course. I thought it ran its course already before the XS came out. But if you've still been holding on to your 6, coming to a XS is a definite recommend when it comes to the performance. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, share it down below. And what do you think about this speed test between the 6 and the XS? I'd love to hear that. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. 